Isaiah 41, verses 6 and 7, they helped everyone his neighbor. And everyone said to his brother, be of good courage. So the carpenter encouraged the goldsmith. And he that smootheth with the hammer, him that smote the anvil, and they said, it is ready for the soldering. And he fastened it with nails that it should not be moved. Before they encouraged one another, they remembered, be of good courage. To encourage yourself in the Lord, it takes courage. That's why the word courage is in the middle of encourage. It takes courage to be encouraged, to encourage another and to believe that it's true. It takes great courage. As you encourage yourself in the Lord, I pray for you tonight that you will have the courage to believe the encouragement the Lord is giving you, that you will be able to be inspired with the hope that is God, to walk in his courage and know that there's confidence there for you, to come boldly before the throne of God. And let's read that in Hebrews, why don't we? It's chapter 4. Isaiah spoke of encouraging one another, and it's very important that we do. One of the things that the Lord loves is unity of the saints. Therefore, we can surmise accurately that one of the things that the devil hates is unity. If we do not encourage one another, we won't be compassionate to one another's needs and pains and joys. Hebrews 4, 14 to 16. Seeing then that we have a great high priest that is passed into the heavens, Jesus, a son of God, let us hold fast our profession. For we have not a high priest which cannot be touched with the feelings of our infirmities, but he was in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. Let us therefore come boldly into the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in a time of need. This is saying Jesus paid a high price so that we could walk in the confidence of who he is in us. We can walk in the inspired hope. We have to remember to hope in Christ. This is saying we can do all these things to come boldly before the Lord and say, I know who I am. I might have a servant's heart. Goody for you if we do. But I'm not a servant. I'm a child of the Lord. You may have a servant's heart, but you're not a slave. You may have a servant's heart, and it's good that you do. It's right that you do. But you are a child of the king. If you never pass from being a slave you'll never understand what it is to be a son. Being a servant doesn't mean you're a slave. I was not sold into slavery. I was bought into servitude with the great privilege and honor of being adopted into that family. It's a big deal. You're a big deal. There are some things that the enemy knows, and I want you to write them down for the upcoming battle that is surely upon you. The devil does not want us to engage in encouragement. He does not want us to be people of courage. He does not want us to pass through the gates of bravery to end in courage. He doesn't want it because he knows four things about the battle that we're looking at. This is why the enemy does not want us to encourage one another. And he does not want us to be encouraged. Because these things he understands. Number one, he knows that we are coming. Why are we coming? Because we got the memo, he's coming. We're meeting him at the hill. He's not getting down in here. We're meeting him at the hill. We heard he was coming, so we made a cake.
You can make a cake, can't you? And sometimes when you're just brave enough to get in the kitchen, when you're just brave enough to stay in there and it's hot, you're just brave enough. The ventilation is bad. There's smoke everywhere. You're just brave enough to stay there. God will say, I'm going to inspire you because you've got courage, man. You're standing there. The heat is hot. And I'm going to have you make a cake, and you're going to kill the devil with that thing. Dude, just do what the Lord tells you to do. Because I'll tell you something. He knows you're coming. The devil knows you are coming. The second thing he knows is he knows that God is with you. He knows that God is with you. He's afraid. He can hardly stand. He's scared to death. The third thing that the devil knows is he knows that you know how to fight. He's hoping that you're not very good at it. He's hoping that you'll be grief stricken and try to stone the people around you. He's hoping that you're going to flash your citizen card of Ziklag and cry about it. But deep down in his heart, he knows that you know how to fight. Amen, sister. And he will try with all his might and all his power to get you to think you don't know how to fight and to get you to think that he is better and greater than you. But he's not. He knows you know how to fight. And it's time that we know that we know how to fight. And lastly, believe it or not, he knows that we will win. He's read the book. He's got the memo. He's even been forced to sing the song. He knows that we win. All he's trying to do is create as much trouble along the way that he can. He's trying to make a big mess to break the heart of God. He's trying to get it so when the battle is over, you'll have dead soldiers around you. Well, we don't have to have dead soldiers around us. We can abound. We can go forward. Okay, you might get your hair burned off. So what? It'll grow back. Doesn't it grow back? It's not that great of a hairdo anyway, from what your neighbor told me. Martin. <laughs> Poor Martin. <laughs> it's the funniest thing about my balding husband. He doesn't care about hair. And everybody else seems to be worried, but he doesn't care about it. And they think he cares about it. And it's hilarious to him because he thinks that you know, wow, they, they think I'm supposed to really care about my hair, but I don't care. And I give him a hard time because I got to go to a haircut. I'm like, you don't have any hair. <laughs> I am the wind beneath your wings. <laughs> Doug, would you come help? Yeah, you are adorable, dear. So the devil knows and the devil's afraid. We know when we are not afraid. Sharpen your tools. Bake that cake. Put any kind of rattling trash in there that you want to because I'm telling you, he'll eat it. Whatever you present to him, he has got to eat. Let it be said that he ate the word of God. Let it be said that he ate courage that he'd never seen before. Let it be said that he ate inspiration and it made him sweat. You made him sick before he left. Let that be said of him. When it's all been said and done There is just one thing that matters did I do my best to live for truth? Did I live my 